please welcome your hosts for the British Soap Awards, Richard Maidley and Judy Finnegan. <laughs> and uh, welcome to the first British Soap Awards, where the stars of the nation's top television shows finally receive the recognition they so richly deserve. Yeah. 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 Well, <clears throat> for once, just for once, the Rovers return, the Queen Vic and the Wool Pack are as empty as the Battersby's Lecky tin. In Hollyoaks, in Charnham, home of family affairs, and on Brookside Close, it is so quiet tonight you could hear a body stir under a patio. Because the residents of all those great national institutions are all here. They're all on their best behaviour. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dressed to the nines. Even the Dingles, who in honour of the occasion have had their annual bath. True, they have. <laughs> uh, we have. We have 13 awards to hand out this evening, voted for by a panel of soap experts and, of course, by the most important judges and critics of all, the viewers. Because, let's face it, I mean, we all do it in our millions, usually three times a week, and once at the weekends for at least an hour. <laughs> I mean, we religiously watch the soaps. For some, they're an obsession. For others, it's much more serious than that. And that's why this promises to be a night as tense and dramatic as any of the great shows that we're honouring this evening. Although we promise that no one will be pushed downstairs or run down by a car or wiped out in a gas explosion unless the ratings require it. The night <laughs> is still young. <laughs> So let's get straight to our first award. It's Best Comedy Performance. And to present it, we are very honoured to have a member of the royal family and one of the nation's best-loved pensioners. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the Queen Mother of Chat Show host, Carolina Hearn. Yay! And the nominations for Best Comedy Performance are David Nielsen for Coronation Street. Gladys Ambrose for Brookside. John Savidan for Coronation Street. And June Brown for East Enders. I know all about the birds and the bees. I mean, in fact, I kept bees years ago. But that's about the extent of it. See, theory. Right. I mean, to be honest, before I met you, I never even had a girlfriend. And when we decided for you to move in, well, I knew I couldn't put it off forever. And I didn't want to. Right. I've even been down the library today for a manual. What, like a car manual? Well, it was quite similar, actually. You know, lots of diagrams and step-by-step -step instructions. And did it make you feel better? Well, I don't know. See, when I got to the counter to have it stamped, I felt myself going red and getting embarrassed, and I, I swapped it for a James Herriot. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry, love. I thought she was going to cross. Come on, love. You might as well go now. Eh? I just thought that was an emergency stop. Have you ticked the box? I suppose you're going to want me to do my reverse now. Oh, I've been dreading this. I can't reverse to save my life. Really? I'd never have guessed. We'll have a go, though, eh? Nothing ventured. Right. Where do you want me? Out of that driving seat. <laughs> I'm afraid your driving test has been terminated, Mrs Brogan. Terminated? I'm afraid so, yes. Well, which bit did I fail on? This has got to stop right now. Well, Paul. It's not but a bit of promotion, just like you were doing over there. Yes, but you're doing it over there as well. Nobody can get near the corned beef. You ask me, we're doing you a favour. Can be dodgy stuff, can corned beef, especially from the Arges. Probably put all sorts in it. And I've not forgiven them for Falklands. Fred, don't talk rubbish. Don't you start lecturing me about rubbish. You're the one what's serving it in tins. Fresh English meat. Caught in front of your eyes and served in hygienic bags. That's the way to feed the nation. I say, that's the way to feed the nation. Aye, she's a fine woman when she's roused. This Mrs Baldwin. Hello. Oh, so looks like we're having a party. Oh, I am. I'm having a ball. <laughs> Here, I'm definitely 
be going to them seltzer classes. Have you been at my tequila? Oh, no, I pulled it away. There was a horrible caterpillar thing in it. Lord knows how the poor thing got in there. Yeah. <laughs> And the winner is John Savidan for Coronation Street. Hours after anything, and they, they told me at the, at the door when I arrived <laughs> after first asking my name. <laughs> so, so, thank you very much. Isn't it pretty? Uh, thank you very much for this, but I, I, I do want to give this also, I know we always say this, but to somebody who helps me an awful lot and without which Fred, whom uh, Fred couldn't function, and that is Stephen Arnold, who plays. <laughs> So, Stephen, dear heart, you can have a rub of this. I say you can have a rub of this in a bit. Soaps are often referred to as operas, and uh, not just because most of the cast try to eventually pursue a singing career. Like opera, soaps are filled with high passion, seething emotions, sustained dramatic intensity, all of which is celebrated in the award for best dramatic performance. And to present the award, an actor and comedian whose CV already has as many credits as Bill Gates's bank statement. Would you please welcome the star of The Fast Show, Playing the Field, and the award-winning comedy drama Cold Feet, John Thompson. <laughs> The nominations for Best Dramatic Performance, number one, Kerry Taylor, Hollyoaks. <laughs> Georgie Taylor, Coronation Street. <laughs> Barbara Windsor, EastEnders. <laughs> and Kevin Fletcher for Emmerdale. Just come close to how I feel. Is this what you wanted? Is it? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lucy, maybe I shouldn't give this to you. Maybe I should give you a chance to reconsider. I don't need to reconsider. Please, just let me have it. Stop, you can't play. You don't want to anyone, I swear. So what would you say? Mum's number, I got lost, anything. Just let me go. Oh, now you've gone and spoilt it all again. Oh, why do women on me always have to start crying, eh? I've just been nice to you as well, taking your gag off. Stop crying! You don't mean that. I was nicking money for you from the post office. I was looking after you. I would have gone away with you. But no, you had to ruin it. You shut it. You shut it. And you killed Mr Windsor. Now everyone's going to hate me. 
We've got to sort this out. You can't go home. I won't let you. What are you going to do, eh? Kill me? Oh. Yeah. And the winner is... Kelvin Fletcher from Riverdale. <laughs> Just, I, just, I just want to thank everyone who's voted for me. That's, that's all I can say, thanks. So sweet. The Zoe come to be first of this evening's awards decided by viewer votes, and it's Villain of the Year. Now, Soap needs a villain like EastEnder Roy Evans needs Viagra. And in the past year, <laughs> we've seen more dodgy dealings than in the Oval Office at the White House. To present the award, the villain's villain, he's the actor who, to soap fans, will always be Dirty Den, who's remained one of our favourite television bad boys. Please welcome Leslie Grantham. <laughs> And the nominations for Villain of the Year are Martin Kemp, EastEnders. Claire King, Emmerdale. Stephen Billington from Coronation Street. And Ross Kemp, EastEnders. And the winner is... Stephen Billington. Yeah. Kind of strange being, I'm shaking. Uh, kind of strange being awarded for a character as dislikable as Greg. Um, I hope the issues that were raised in our scenes were were dealt with in a sympathetic way to people who are victims of that kind of violence. I'd also like to say that I couldn't have done it without Sally Whitaker. Thank you very much. Our next award is for Best Storyline, and as our nominations will reveal, this has been another great year for thrilling and absorbing soap action. As Stephen just said, soaps pride themselves in dealing with uh, controversial and challenging subjects. This year, Coronation Street introduced the first transsexual character. Although, of course, uh, EastEnders used to have Ethel, who never went anywhere without her woolly tucked under her arm. <laughs> but, but to present the award for Best Storyline, the manager of Britain's best-known television supermarket, the one store where you can be sure there's always fresh mince. Please go wild in the aisles for Dale Winton. And the nominations for the best storyline are Michael Stark, Brookside for Sinbad. Sinbad and the Gas Explosion on the Parade, executive producer Phil Redmond. David Nielsen and Julie Hesmanhausch for Coronation Street. And that was for, for Roy and Haley's courtship leading to their marriage, producer David Hansen. Martin McCutcheon, East Enders. And that is for. That is for Tiffany's discovery of her husband's affair with her mother. It all went on, didn't it? Executive producer, Matthew Robinson. And finally, Sarah Dunn, Hollyoaks. <laughs> and that was for, for Mandy's triumph over her sexually abusive father, executive producer, Phil Redmond. <laughs> and the winner is... Marty McCutcheon, yeah. EastEnders, executive producer, Matthew Robinson. Thanks, 
quickly, um, I'd like to thank Ross Kemp for being completely amazing to work with. Um, I'd also like to thank Carol Harrison. Um, believe it or not, we did that storyline and we hadn't known each other that long and I think she's been fantastic. Um, and uh, this really means a lot to me because this sort of... Um, stands for something that I was a part of, that I was very proud to be a part of. Thank you, and thank you to Matthew, and thank you to everybody else that made Tiffany what she was. Thank you. <laughs> Tiffany is the love of my life. I never knew it till now, but I'm never going to forget it. So why were we nearly kissing again the other night? You know there is. Don't give me that. You just used me for sex when she wasn't giving you any. And now that she is, you just want me for babysitting instead. It should never have happened. We, we did a terrible thing. I, and believe me, we both regret it. Well, don't want to hear this. Oh, please, just let me try to... No! There were reasons. It, it wasn't his fault, it was mine. Don't you dare make excuses for him. Why doesn't do anything he doesn't want to do? Oh, please, please, just... Say. I'll never forgive either of you for what you've done to me for the rest of my life. Still to come, the awards for the sexiest male and the sexiest female. We've got best on-screen partnership and best exit. So stay tuned. The British Soap Awards will return in just a couple of minutes.
British Soap Awards, where all your favourite stars are battling it out for the honours. And our next award is for Best On-Screen Partnership, honouring those soap couples who've uh, taken each other for better or for worse, usually both. Our presenters for this one were the first King and Queen of Brookside, back when it was a respectable place of mere adulterous affairs, GBH, and it was a petty crime. He was Bobby, she, of course, was she. Please welcome the Grants, alias Sue Johnson and Nicky Tomlinson. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. The nominations for the best on-screen partnership are Lisa Riley and Dominic Brown for Emmerdale Farm, <laughs> David Nielsen and David Hasselhoff for Coronation Street. <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry, Julie Hasselhoff. Sorry. I told you not to drink anything. <laughs> I thought the coffee was working. <laughs> Dean Sullivan and Sue Jenkins for Brookside. And William Tarmy and Elizabeth Dawn, Coronation Street. He didn't give you enough time, did he? Was Zach there? No, he was out all day. It was just between me and Butch in the end. But when it came to it, it was just so cold. We should never have come to this in the first place. Don't even go there. Why do we always have to argue? Why can't we just be happy? Of course I'm happy. Then give me a cuddle then. I love you. Oh, I love you too. What I'd like is if eventually uh, you and me could uh, like possibly think of uh, having a relationship. Well, we already are, in a way. No, 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 you're misunderstanding. No, me. I'm not. You mean an affair? Yes. But you would have to be very patient with me. See, it's, it's not something that I'm comfortable with. I mean, not, not because of you being you, but... <laughs> well, because I'm me, really. <laughs> I have to take it a step at a time. I'd like that. Would you, really? Yeah, more than anything. Yeah. Not like you. I just want what most people want, you know. I just want to feel comfortable. And I just want to feel safe. And I just want a bit of... <laughs> of normality. Oh. Right, yeah. Like, we're poor, but proud and happy. Yeah. But if I'd wanted to be happy, I wouldn't have stuck with you, would I? Whatever happens, we've got each other, don't we? I've got you on. You've got me. Hi. <laughs> I know I don't tell you, but I do love you. Oh, now give over, Vera. You know you embarrass me when you talk like that. <laughs> I do love you. I know you're a waste, uh, an idle sod, a shirker. And I was looking at other women. Who? Who? You! But you know, if I had my life to live over again, I... I'd still be. The winner is David Nielsen and Julie Hesman. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, thanks to Brian Park for going with his storyline because uh, it was very brave and without this we wouldn't have met and uh, it's been fantastic. She's brilliant. I love her. <laughs> Our next two awards have been decided by viewer vote. They are Sexiest Male and Sexiest Female and I'm told that Hayley from Coronation Street is eligible for both categories. <laughs> 
<laughs> Our presenters happen to be two of the sexiest people on television today. Please welcome the younger generation's answer to Jack Duckworth and Pat Butcher, from Coronation Street, Matthew Marsden, and from The Big Breakfast, Kelly Brook. OK, well, the nominations for Sexy Female are Denise Welsh from Coronation Street, Claire King from Emmerdale, Tamsin Uthwaite from EastEnders, and Tracy Shaw from Coronation Street. OK. And the winner is Tamsin Uthwaite. Complete madness. So unexpected. Um, I suppose I'd like to say that thank you really to the BBC for the last nine months. Just unbelievable. It's completely been the best nine months of my life. I love being there. It's beautiful. I love everybody there. But the main thing is I didn't actually realise that working in that pound shop was quite so sexy. But obviously <laughs> it's working for me, working with Ian Beale. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the nominations for Sexiest Male are Ross Kemp for EastEnders, Adam Rickett for Coronation Street, Stuart Wade for Emmingdale, and Michael Greco for EastEnders. So the winner is Michael Greco. <laughs> um, totally unexpected. I'm going to come in for a lot of ribbing from my friends. Cheers, thank you. Our next award, which is Best Exit, recognises the most thrilling, gripping, edge of the seat soap departures of the past year. Best Exit. Soaps have more exits than the M1, most of them <laughs> dramatic and action packed. In the last year alone, for example, Des Barnes died after a fight with a drug dealer. Tiffany was knocked down and killed by a car driven by Frank Butcher. And uh, most memorable of all, Liz McDonald went to Milton Keynes. <laughs> <laughs> to present the award for Best Exit, the star of Sunburn and Real Women and the actress who made Cindy Beale so great to love and hate, please welcome Michelle Collins. <laughs> I'm so glad Ian Bill's done well for himself. <laughs> He's a sucker for blondes, isn't he? <laughs> OK. Um, right, the nominations for Best Exit are Phil Middlemass, Coronation Street. <laughs> Producer David Hampton. Martine McCutcheon. <laughs> EastEnders. Simon Ashdown. Claire King, Emmerdale. And um, the Hart family from Family Affairs. The producer is Brian Park. It was a black pool up in the tower. All the lights were on. I was looking down. The place was deserted. I was shouting. Oh, shh, never mind. He's still tired. I was shouting. Mrs. Barnes. I love you, Mrs. Barnes. <laughs> you daft beggar. Oh, 
Oh, please. This one's on me. Bye, Chris. Can you imagine? No. Kim Tate. Je vais te la garder, c'est le chômeur. Shock actually, um, but it does go to not just all the cast who are brilliant, but everybody who works behind the scenes, um, all the unsung heroes, um, to the panel who voted for this, uh, but particularly to Pippa McCarthy and all the other story writers who did the final exit. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> his climax with the awards for best actor best actress and best soap so please join us in just a couple of minutes when we return with the british soap awards <laughs>
Welcome back to the British Soap Awards, and we're about to present one of tonight's most prestigious prizes, the Special Achievement Award. This award recognises an outstanding contribution to a soap and to the viewing pleasure of millions of fans over the years. And to make the citation one of the country's foremost broadcasters and novelists, please welcome the presenter of the South Bank Show, <coughs> Melvin Bragg. <laughs> Hello, I'm, uh, hello, I'm delighted to be here at these awards and be part of this celebration of great British soaps. I'm particularly pleased to present an award for special achievement to an actor who has the unique distinction of having starred in Britain's longest running soap from its first episode on December the 9th, 1960, to the present day. That show is the classic Coronation Street. The character is Ken Barlow, the actor is William Roach. So, 2,500 episodes, nearly 40 years, and there's always been Ken Barlow on that marvellous serial. He arrived on the street as one of a new breed, a new generation of 60s man, a working-class boy who left Weatherfield to attend one of the new red brick universities, and who came back with a degree, a cosmopolitan outlook, and a new set of opinions to challenge the worlds of Uncle Albert Tatlock, Minnie Caldwell, and Ina Sharples. Ken Barlow was Soap's new rock and roll. Good looking, <laughs> rebellious and restless, qualities that have characterised him throughout his career, or should I say careers, he's been a personnel officer, a lecturer, a taxi driver, a social worker, a business executive, a newspaper editor, a school teacher and a male escort. <laughs> We should also mention, of course, the other great long-running saga that Ken has been involved in, his feud with Mike Baldwin, played by Johnny Briggs. Together, they form the De Niro and Pacino of <laughs> this. It's a, it's a testimony to William Roach's wonderful portrayal of Ken Barlow that throughout all these dramatic twists and turns, he's always remained a credible, sympathetic and ever-watchable character. Ah, oh, so ask Kenny? No, uh, no, thank you. Oh, but I got it specially. You always loved it when you was little. Did I? What's up? Nothing. But that's new to expression for, then? Well, what's new to expression? That new pullover's turned out a treat. Mind you, I'll not knit you another one in that colour, though. Navy blue plays the devil with me eyes. Janet? You all right? Oh, dear God Almighty. I loved you. I'm the man you married. I'm exactly the same now as I was then, and if that wasn't what you wanted, why did you marry me? Oh, Ken. Ignore it. No. Why did you put the phone down on me? It's Ken. He knows. I've told him everything. Just get out of this house. Shut up! Shut up. Oh, I'm warning you. Get out of this house. Get out of You me. go! Go! I've had enough of your poison in my family. More than enough. Look. I want to know where you've been and who you were. Oh. Is it revenge for me and Mike? Of course not. Is it serious? You're really enjoying this, aren't you? Hey, As a matter of fact, no. I am. Hey, Bastard! Not this one! Oh, oh, oh. 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 Come here, you! Come here! Leave it, Ollie! All right? Just leave it! All right. I never started it, did I? Well, I'll vouch for that. Started it? You started everything. All right, come on. Come on. Leave it, you. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the award for Special Achievement in British Soap goes to William Roach.
Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, I think this is really an award for falling to pieces before your eyes over 38 <laughs> years. But um, that was very touching, and uh, thank you very much indeed. I, <clears throat> I really, really don't know what to say. Uh, I suppose old age really is the reason why I've got it. I mean, um, I mean, I suppose there are three reasons why I got this. Really, all you have to do is learn your lines, turn up on time, and keep doing that for 38 years. Um, <laughs> I'd like to think I'd be eligible for this award again in another 20 years. I don't know, but uh, thank you very much. Well, our next award is for Best Actor. The nominees being the top four male performers voted for by the viewers. Now, this battle is going to be hotter than Betty's Hot Pot. And fittingly, to present such a major prize, we have the actress who played Hilda Ogden, one of the great legends. <laughs> One of the great legends of British soaps over the last 30 years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jean Alexander. Don't get worried, I'm not going to sing. The nominations for Best Actor are Kelvin Fletcher, Emma Dale, <laughs> David Nielsen, Coronation Street, <laughs> Dean Sullivan, Brookside, <laughs> and Ross Kemp, EastEnders. Most my childhood trying to keep my head down, learning how to get by without being noticed so people wouldn't pick on me. I thought it were in the past, that's all. Can you imagine what it feels like to have to live through this? And all the time, the only thing that is letting me walk round with my head held high is that I know I didn't do it. But because you said I did, Susan, the law is just waiting to tear me to pieces, to ruin everything I've strived for all these years. Promise me you'll think about telling the truth about what really happened in school. Because I'm telling you, love, that's the only way you'll ever get your own life back. No way. Don't go. And the winner is Ross Kemp, EastEnders. <laughs> Well, first off, I'm very honoured to receive an award from a lady of such acting standards in the lady that probably um, helped guide me into the career that I'm in now. Um, I look a bit sunburned, a little bit thinner than I normally look. You may have noticed, I am. I've just spent 10 days in Alaska, supposedly surviving on my own. 
And when I got there, the guy that was supposed to uh, help me survive said um, three things. Count on nothing, expect the unexpected, and everything's subject to change. <laughs> and I think that's the advice I'd give to any actor going into any soap in this country. <laughs> So, very honoured, very humble, but mainly I'd like to say to all of us here, either those of us who are in front of the camera or behind it, we're members of a special club, and we should never forget that, because we do more hours in television than anybody else does. Yeah. Well, those other actors that sit there and go, oh, you're in a soap now, are you? What's it like? We do the best job in the world, so thank you very much. Best Actress is next, and once again, the viewers have voted in their thousands to find the top four nominees. And to present the award, someone who first achieved national fame as a hod carrier on our feed his own pet, an experience which will have helped him not to drop any bricks when acting opposite Madonna in the film of Eater. Ladies and gentlemen, he's just released his new album, Tadpoles in a Jar, and he'll be touring later in the year. Please welcome Jimmy Dale. <laughs> Ken Barlow. <laughs> He's had more scraps than me. <laughs> the nominations for Best Actress are Julie Hesmond Halsh, <laughs> Coronation Street, <laughs> Barbara Windsor, EastEnders, <laughs> Lisa Riley, Emma Dale, <laughs> and Patsy Palmer, EastEnders. <laughs> But there's no way. We can't get married. We're not allowed to get married. Because of what it says on my birth certificate. We can't ever get married, Roy. Not until there's a change in the law. I see. I see. <clears throat> Do you think we ought to wait for that, then? Change in the law? I think we'd have a pretty long wait. It's not on, Roy, marriage. It's just not one of our options. It was a lovely thought, though. Thank you. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I receive this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. There's not a man alive worth starving himself for. Not even Paddy. Especially not Paddy. Look, I don't want anything. You just leave me on my own. There's no point in getting yourself in a state. <laughs> I can't help it. He was the first bloke I ever trusted. I never thought he'd treat me like this. Now, come on, love. All the other blokes I've been with just treat me like a joke. And I got used to it. I thought Paddy was different. More for me. This is different. We don't have a swat in this, Miss Sounds like before. The same bloke as before. Are you really going to make me go through all that again? Mrs Butcher, I never make anyone do anything. Well, then get out of my way. Oh, maybe it's just best if we uh, sit down and talk about this. Have you ever had children? Oh, I've got children, yes. But you've never had a baby, have you? Well, of course not. So don't start telling me what I should and shouldn't do, all right? Because even if this baby has got spider fever, I'm keeping it, all right? <laughs> Heavy stuff. And the winner is Barbara Windsor. I mean, I've always got too much to say, haven't I? Um, 
I, I, gosh, for acting, I've made my living making people laugh. You know, I never thought I'd make the old Vic, but this is for the Queen Vic. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I just can't believe it. I want to thank people who've, who've kind of voted for me. It's nice to know that someone will switch on their set and say, oh, I like her. I like what she does. Is she good? Thank you so much. I, I don't know. It's really wonderful. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> And so we come to the climax of the show, the battle royale that is the award for best British soap. It's a cliffhanger moment, the type of moment that soaps specialise in, and in that tradition, I'm sorry to say that we're not going to reveal the outcome tonight. Aww. Just thought we'd leave you lot in a state of suspense for once, as you do it to us. We don't mean it. This category <laughs> has quite rightly been decided by the only true judge and jury of such matters, the great British viewing public. And as the Mitchells square up to the Dingles, the Grants, Eyeball, the Battersbys, and the cast of Family Affairs and Hollyoaks head for the bar before the rush starts, let's introduce <laughs> the man with the task of announcing the winner. He's that rare thing, a politician who's popular, and he will no doubt claim that British soaps are doing much better under the new Labour government than they did under the <laughs> Tories. Please welcome the Deputy Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Prescott. <laughs> Thank you. I was a little apprehensive coming tonight to make sure that Chumba Wumba wasn't here. <laughs> I wouldn't know whether to put on my dinner suit or the wetsuit. <laughs> Still, I was a little more reassured when I came in and somebody asked me for my autograph. Well, you do, don't you? Sign it. A bit disappointed when they thought I was Jack Duckworth. <laughs> Still, seriously... Seriously, I'm delighted to be here at the first awards. Because soap opera is about real life and British soap is the best. So let's get on with the nominations. The nominations for tonight for the best British soap are Brookside. <laughs> Coronation Street. <laughs> EastEnders. <laughs> Emmerdale. <laughs> Family Affairs. <laughs> and Hollyoaks. from the North Coronation Street. the first ever British Soap Awards. Our congratulations to the winners and, of course, to the other nominees who did so well to be shortlisted in such a fiercely competitive set of categories. And our thanks to you at home for watching. Yes. We will now adjourn to the Rover's return for a dry sherry. So, <laughs> until the British Soap Awards 2000, it's good night from her. And it's good night from me. Good, good night. night.